Hey guys, welcome to The Microwave. Hey guys, if you have a testimony or an amazing experience, contact us here on The Microwave. Uh, the contact information is on the screen and uh, write us and share your experience with us. We're convinced that the difference between uh, contemplating suicide and life is just simply being a voice. And you have a voice here on The Microwave. Hey guys, welcome back to The Microwave. Hey guys, one thing I don't want you guys to do is miss the subscribe button. Please subscribe, uh, share, comment, hit that notification bell so we can continue to bring you guys uh, uplifting, encouraging um, content. Uh, I'm excited today. I have a special guest uh, with me and I wanna jump straight into it. Uh, this young lady is no novice to the comedian world. She have um, experience across the board. She has uh, awesome experience. And I want to jump straight into it. Introducing to some and presenting to others, Anastasia. The what? <laughs> Anastasia, the comedian. The bold. The bold. You want to start something already? Okay, I'm sorry. The microwave is about the to microwave. get turned on <laughs> and it's about to get hot. It's about to get hot as oh, I need room. you to rewind. <laughs> Anastasia, my friend. My brand is very important. <laughs> I worked for that devote. Anastasia, I'm glad to have you here. You are so funny. I've been laughing behind no, stage. No, I'm serious. You need to say Anastasia DeBow. Anastasia DeBow. In my, in my, in my, in my intro. Since you've got her, we've been laughing. <laughs> we've been chopping it up behind stage. You are a very uh, rare individual. And it's really an honor and it's a privilege. I've, I've done many podcasts, video podcasts, and um, uh, they don't devalue anybody's that's been here before you, but you're a very unique person in your own way. And it's an honor and a privilege to have you here. Um, I can't introduce you, <laughs> you know, you you um, have a long resume. So I wanna get straight into it. Um, you're no novice to the comedian world. You have experience. Uh, what can we look for in 2023 from Anastasia the Bold. What can well, we look for? Well, my comedy is taking a turn. Um, mm -hmm. It's getting more serious and it's getting more where I'm more ministry. I'm doing more ministry than regular comedy because comedy in itself has changed mm -hmm. um, uh, post COVID. Um, mm -hmm. Hold on, you said. Come ministry. Yes, yeah, come ministry. What what does that mean? Come that's ministry. Minis that's ministry by way of comedy. Hold on. Ministry by the way of comedy yes. equals come ministry. Come ministry. And I'm the crazy. only one. And I'm the only one that if you Google the word, it's gonna only show me. Come ministry. Yes. Viewers, do y'all hear that? Come ministry. <laughs> that is so innovative. It's very unique. Come ministry. Tell us a little bit about come ministry. Come ministry is the ability to give the spoken word or the written word and in a format in which the people can laugh but also be enlightened and touched and changed. Wow. And it also enables the individual to retain the information longer because they are laughing. Mm. And so laughter soothes the soul yep. rather than being ridiculed and judged or told in a format mm. where you feel dictated to. Mm. With laughter, the person is laughing with you and not at gotcha. you. And in ministry, it's relatable. How long, how long have you been a comedian? I've been a comedian for 21 years. 21 March years. the 27th of this year. Now, will... I got to say this, y'all. Uh, the way I met... <laughs> the way I met Anastasia is so funny. She was doing the show um, in Garland somewhere. She was a headline for that night. I think I was doing some Christian hip-hop open mic, and she was a comedian for that night. I came in late. I had a seat on the front row, and so I was walking up <laughs> over people, and I sat in my chair, and my chair broke. <laughs> now, when my chair broke, my legs went in the air. 
Now, you know good and well, you can't be late <laughs> on the front row when a comedian is doing stand-up in your chair break. Man, when I tell y'all, she fired me up, <laughs> but she, <laughs> she roasted me for about 10 minutes. Now, Anastasia, I got to... I, see, I need my props because... I was a reason why she run hard that night because, you know, I gave her a reason to really. So tell me, in moments like that, when somebody mess up, is that like gasoline for the fire? Does that really just put you in your mode and your drive when somebody do something funny like that in the audience? Does do do you feed off that? How does that work? It depends on the it depends on the energy and the situation. Uh, Your response to it welcomes comedy. Yeah, you didn't you didn't you weren't angry, you weren't bitter. You just kind of like tried to hurry up and like you was like you gave me like it was like oh lord you right, gave right, me right, look. Right. So, but your energy was inviting. Right. Had you been a female who had failed and she had kind of hurt herself, I'd have been like boo, go on, get up. Gone does it all, baby. That ass still look fine or whatever. <laughs> I'd have said something right. more soothing and got her up to like to soothe the spirit. Right, right. But it just really depends on the person, the situation, and the, the energy of the the energy right, of the right. audience. So it's it's to each to each situation different. Could have happened to somebody right. drunk and ignorant and they'd have fell. I'd have said I wouldn't have said nothing. I'd have went to the opposite of the room, opposite side of the room, and started right, making right. comedy about something over there to act like I didn't even right. see it wow. to give that time wow. person time to recover wow. and get back in their place. Man, so that, it's about being able to to understand the yeah, energy of people. That's good insight. I notice you you you're inspirational, uh, spiritual. I've come across some of your um, your Facebook post and you really seem to encourage that's really what made me reach out to you because i haven't heard from you in a long time and when i you came across my time i said oh that's anastasia and i was listening to um your your post and how you encourage your people uh at this time in your life what does the ministry part comes from where where was that birth because when you think comedian you think of cussing glittering, i'm all that I'm all that. All that. Mm-hmm. I'm all that. <laughs> I cuss when necessary because everybody ain't gonna listen to be thou and though. So you yeah. have to meet people at their level of communication. Mm. It's some people I can do a whole Christian comedy show straight cussing, and they get the word. They gonna shout. I've done comedy. I actually did a comedy show in Oak Cliff, uh, over by Cock- off of Cockrell Hill. There was a little daiquiri place in a corner, uh, over there by Legends in Duncanville where I did a comedy show, and I do believe Corey Cap Hill was the host of the show. Mm-hmm. But um, the, the 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 thing about the comedy show was somewhere in my comedy set, I started just preaching in my, in, in my within my set. Mm-hmm. And the DJ started playing gospel music. The people were shouting from my comedy. Wow. And it was amazing to see that one, like some of the crowd was shouting playfully but the energy was real Real. and other people were shouting in the spirit which was also real Mm. i had to leave off the stage and go outside because the spirit was so overwhelming and see i don't i don't pick when god chooses to show up in my comedy shows i just give him i just give him freedom to show up where he get ready and i can go from straight preaching back into my comedy set right back to cussing (laughs) like it wasn't i feel that even right now i feel that no yeah and it's 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 just i feel that it's a wonderful gift to have and see when you know yourself people can't make you feel no type of way when i first started comedy um i remember i had a I had a wonderful uh, young lady that was in my life, uh, a church lady, mm-hmm. and uh, I looked up to her so much. And uh, in the beginning of my comedy career, I, I remember I had just got paid five hundred dollars for my first comedy show. I hadn't been doing comedy uh, three months yet, mm-hmm. and I got paid five hundred dollars, and I was so excited. So I went to tell this church person. I seen her in the store. I seen her, and this what I told her it makes a significant difference. Mm-hmm. So she um, she was in, the, in West Dallas and on Singleton and. Um, Westmoreland at this grocery store she was in the parking lot and so I had, anyway she ended up telling me that God didn't like comedy she broke my heart I walked in the store crying with tears in my eyes but I never let the tears fall because the spirit kept saying don't let the tears fall I walk in the store it's an old lady at the back of the store never seen her before never looked up to know who was calling me all she said was baby what's wrong with you my face lifted up. I seen an old lady that looked like Rosa Parks. I ran over there and I went to tell her that on Sister Hanbury. 
the, uh, sister, this lady that told me uh, comedy ain't this and da 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 da. And I went to run it down, and tears was pouring down my face. It was an angel. She touched my shoulder. She said, "Do she said when you do comedy, do you make people laugh?" I said, "Yes, ma'am." She said, "When you do comedy, do you feel good?" I said, "Yes, ma'am." She said, "Do you do comedy?" When she just asked me several questions, everything was yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When she got through, she said, "You keep doing comedy the way you doing it." And she mm-hmm. said, "When God get ready to change your path, mm-hmm. He'll change it. Don't you do nothing mm-hmm. until God say do it." Mm-hmm. I said, "Yes, ma'am." It was like all my tears had absorbed up and cried, just just absorbed off my face. Mm-hmm. She touched me again and walked off. I walked going the opposite direction. I took seven steps. God said, turn around and look back. She wasn't there. I ran back. I looked down every aisle. She wasn't there. Wow. God had sent an angel to save me and to save my spirit because he knew how much that woman meant in my life. And sometimes we'll put people on a pedestal higher than God. Mm-hmm. And God will have to send an angel in to save us. Because people can kill your dreams people can if you let their seeds take root in your religion. spirit and dry up everything God created you to be. And she had that; she had almost done it, but wow. God said not so. Wow! You have a you have a ministry called Pimp Ministries. Yes, Pimp <laughs> Ministries. Tell us about Pimp Ministry. What does that? What is that? You have an acronym? Yes, Pimp Ministry stands for Pushed Into My Purpose. Pimp Ministry stands into Push. Push into my purpose. Into my purpose. Pimp yeah. Ministries. Push into my purpose. Tell me a little bit about that and how that came about. Um, that's my ministry God gave me. And when he gave it to me, I said, ain't nobody going to come to no church called no Pimp Ministry. He said, everybody going to come. Mm-hmm. And the reason it's called Pimp Ministry is because the word pimp is taken as a word of people taking people money or leading people or for weaker minded people following a stronger minded person who's able to control them. But originally how Pippin got started was when the men went to war, the women that didn't have husbands, the men would assist them in taking care of their households, the men that were left behind and didn't qualify to go to the military. Hmm. So that's originally how Pippin got started. Everything that this world has taken and made negative originally started on the path of God. Hmm. And so um, when I say pushed into my purpose, pimping pushes people into their purpose. It's a whole lot of women out here being promiscuous their whole life and didn't know their body had a value. Most women that are hoes are not hoes because they want to sell sex. They are women who are mm-hmm. looking for somebody to fulfill a need in hopes that what I'm giving you will make you feel some kind of way that you will want to take me out the position I'm in. Mm-hmm. If it don't, everybody don't want to be out there. Some people just don't know where else to go wow. because their sexuality has been abused. And since it was taken from me, I'd rather sell it and make a profit off of it than to let somebody take it from me for hold free. Hold on, hold on. And so... Hold on, when you preach into it, hold on, wait, hold on, take a slow, wait, hold on. <laughs> now, hold on, now. You you have um, a, um event coming up that's called um, uh, Tell Us About the Night Queen. What is it, Night Queen? Uh, queens Take the Mic, Open Mic Night. Queen Takes the... Tonight. Queens take the mic. Queens take the mic. And Open on, mic night. Over mic night. And that's on Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday Thurs- night, Queen takes the mic. It's open mic. Night. Right. Okay. Uh, they can see the information on the screen for that. All right. well, how did that come about as we wrap this up? How does that come about? Well, just an opportunity presented itself. Uh, Queens Hookah Lounge is owned by a very nice gentleman, uh, Mr. Omar. And he, uh, he gave me an opportunity to have something there because I'm really... Uh, at this time in my life, trying to do shows that bring my people together and now, getting us to communicate. Is that open for comedians? It's open for comedians, R&B, poetry, hey, anything positive. If you, anything if you positive. do R&B, comedian, poetry, uh, mm-hmm. hip-hop, whatever, mm-hmm. contact Anastasia. The contact information is on the screen uh, for the Thursday night queen. Take the mic and um, take advantage of this. Uh, we like what you're doing. Uh, yes. I don't have enough time. We're going right. to give you a, <laughs> we're gonna have to give you more time because uh, it's obviously you have a lot of word in you. Uh, you have a lot of wisdom um, and you're definitely going to be someone um, that God is going to use in a tremendous way Absolutely. in this day and time. And we, we're glad to have you. And guys, remember, please comment subscribe yes. like hit that subscribe button now um hit that notification bell 
and um, look up Anastasia the Bold. Yes. Uh, you can find her on all platforms. She has amazing content, and uh, we're gonna have her back. Um, and and as of always, guys, uh, your today, your tomorrow is determined by the choices you make today. But yet tomorrow isn't promised to us. So be sure you make the right choices today. And we're going to see you guys again very soon here on The Microwave. Hey guys, I hope you was encouraged uh, by what you heard. Hopefully you heard something that will gas gear and will catapult you to the next level. Hey guys, remember to uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification button so we can continue to bring you guys uh, awesome content to uplift you. And remember, tomorrow isn't promised to us, so make the best of your today. And until we meet again here on The Microwave.